Mr. Mayor, good to see you. Hello, Thank, hey, thanks for making the trip. Oh, thanks, man. I'm jerky. dying to see this place. You know that. Jerky. Jerky, not okay. Not for you. Not for, <laughs> not, for, not for me. All right. Well, who... Who do we have here? All right, these, these, this first section, we have a whole bunch of puppies. There are, there are two mothers, one who had the puppies already in the den, and another one who was pregnant, her sister. So we got these puppies, they're little four or five week old puppies. They're about a year old now. Where do you see them? They're, they're huge, and so they're also- two, sis two sisters? Two sisters, yeah, yeah. The second one had the puppies here. And they're all hand raised, you know, and they're you beautiful. They're, they're beautiful. They're, this they're, is a beautiful dog. Yeah, oh, where do you see the rest? Look, look behind you. So, this dog here? Yeah. Yeah, you want a treat? You want a treat? There you go. There you go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, he was having trouble eating, you told me. No, we're, we're trying to find out why he's not gaining weight. Oh, I see. So, we're giving him different food he's to find out why. He's not gaining weight. Yeah. His, his, his blood is fine, so we got to figure it out. Maybe if I show him a little less. Come on, kids. You see that they're all... There we go. Hey! Come on. There you go. Come on. No? Come on. There he goes. Here he goes. Oh, see what's going on? With the camera? Remember we talked about this? With the camera? No. You're a stranger. They're used to us because we're. But they we, came over before. They were looking. They at were him. looking at me. They were. They were running. But they're, they're, they're very sensitive. They're, yeah. Who, are, sure. who are you? Who are you? Now they've not been abused. They were because. But they they're were, still suspicious. So, so this group here. Yeah. You found the two mothers in the wilderness. Yeah. They were both pregnant. One. One, one had had the litter. One had the litter, and, and one was, was pregnant. To. Yeah. So one group was born in the wilderness and then right. came here, and the other group was born here. Right. But in any event, they've all been brought brought up. Here. Here. Yeah. Now he sees it. Come on. One there you, you go. Two. One for you too. You're a good dog. Yeah. Come on, dog. Yeah. Oh, come Look on. Look how shy. Look how shy. Want me to drop it? Yeah, just drop it. Yeah. There. there. Yeah. Oh no, no. That was. Oh, no, he got it. He you got, got it? it. All right. He got it. Watch out there. Yeah. Oh, this Look group. It. There we go. This group looks a little readier. Two different litters. Yeah, they are. Th that was out there. So these are cousins. These dogs here. These are cousins. They're sisters. Yeah. Now these are the ones who were born here, so they're, you see how friendly? The ones who were born out there are a little standoffish. I gotta make there sure you, you go. got a whole one. Come on, come on, come on. I know you. Come on, baby. You're gonna take this one too, right? How about we, how about we have your sister get a little one here? Well, all right, go ahead, share it. Look at these, look at these, look at these, look at these. The big kissers. They wanna kiss, they wanna kiss. Now, so, that's not no, because of the jerky. They just love so kissing. So why, why the, uh, the nice reaction to humans since, I guess, because they've been here? Well, right? they were born here, so they've, they've had nothing but... Humans taken care love, of. Yeah. <whistles> oh, he didn't see. The other one didn't get one yet. Hey, pal. Come here. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> that's his new name, pal. <laughs> <laughs> hey, baby, come here. we got to take care of you. When they were little, you could go in and play, and they'll just take your knees out. Now they'll 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 take your your shirt off. <laughs> this little guy can jump these fences, so you kidding me? We have to see. What we have to do. He can get over this fence. He, well, he can get over this. So yeah. we put these on with extenders. So now he he's. Has he done it? No, because they, they see the way it goes. If they if they get this high, if they get this high, yeah. they're gonna fall backwards. So he's a jumper. Yeah, he's a jumper. They're clever. And you look at him, you go, how the heck could this guy be the one? Yeah, he's small. This is Olympia. I think we're going to get muddied up. Muddied up? Are we going to get muddied yeah, up? Yeah. Hey, Olympia. Come here, honey. Come here, Olympia. Come on, baby. Now, tell me about Olympia. She Olympia's like about 10 years old. Well. She was she was in a desert. Olympia looks like she's having a little trouble walking. Olympia is getting older and she has back issues, so yeah. we got her on medication for her back. Was she uh, found in the wilderness? Yeah, and she had two puppies with her, and that's one of her pups over there. Right here? Yeah. Born? Born out that there. One of yours, Born Olympia? out there. She, she was traveling Look, with them. She had coming two around puppies. the side. Here, yeah, there she goes. There she goes. There you go, Olympia. Don't worry, I'm friendly. So Olympia would be... Olympia seems to be a little further along than the two mothers, in the sense that oh, yeah, she'll no. relate to people better. Well, Olympia... 
Olympia and her two pups were, looks like they were from a house recently abandoned. Ah. Whereas the shepherds look like they were out there for a while. I see. They could have been abandoned as pups and they grew up out there. I know, I know, you're shy. She's you're a beautiful a girl. This is uh, the Dickens character, Moore. What's, what's it, was it, who is the Dickens? David Copperfield, the kid comes up and, Moore please. Some of them, I mean, you think, I just gave you a treat and it's gone in a flash, they swallow it whole. Yeah. Oh, you're, you're crying a little there. There you go. That's look, at, look at it's gun, gun. Oh, you're a little baby here. Oh, you can't get up? You can't get up there? Here. It's a timing thing. <laughs> What's wrong? A little sick? There you go. She has a little trouble with the hind legs. Yeah, they're older. Oh. She's like 12 years old. Here, here, sweetheart. Here you go. Look. There's another one for you. Right there, right there. Look. You'll find it right there. There you go. This is Hart's. She looks young. Well, that, she'll surprise you. I have a I have a Christmas mailing that I send out pretty much the same every year. And there's these little puppies, four little puppies. They're about two months old and they're all sleeping. And they have little Santa hats on. And I say that they're dreaming of what Santa's gonna bring them. <laughs> this is like 10 years later. This is, she's one of the only survivors of the four. So she's, she's up there. She looks young. You know, the interesting thing is the puppies change. The yeah. colors change and stuff. So she was like a, 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 a black and tan puppy that you expect it to be heavy black, heavy tan. Mm -hmm. So when I sent a picture to people of what she looks like today, a number of people wrote in and said, you're lying. That's not the puppy. <laughs> no, it's the puppy. That's not the puppy. I, this is the puppy. But they change. So, so that black. Had her for 10 years. Yeah. And when they grow up, when the puppies grow up, they get about a year or stuff. So the colors sometimes, they get the deep black turned so wait, into where did, this. Where did she come from? Oh, the four were desert dogs. Pardon me? The, the four, the puppies were desert, desert puppies. She was born in the desert? They were born in the desert, yeah. And you found them there? Wait, wait, yeah, what's she, their mom or without? No, no mom. Oh. No. Abandoned. So abandoned, yeah. See that? Look at hearts. We had... And your siblings are we, gone, huh? We, we had spades, hearts, clubs, and diamonds. Oh. So you found the four... That, does that happen a lot, Leo, where you find the pups? Um, no. Usually with the mom? No, they were, they were dumped. Um, Puppy? They, they were abandoned as, as a litter, yeah. Um, people throwing them out. So somebody kept the mother and got rid of the... the litter. Yeah, or... Got rid of the mother and the litter. There was no mother. Yeah. So we know they abandoned the pups because where they were. We had a puppy here. We had a puppy. How's this? He's passed away now. His name was Fluke. I used to bring people down and show him on a tour. I'd have them. I'd have them come in. I say, go in there and everybody's standing around. Tell me what you notice about Fluke. And they'd guess all kinds of things, but nobody guessed. Blind. He's totally blind. He was blind? He was blind. They took a puppy who was blind and threw him out in the desert. He's blind. And he's a little... So he had been a home dog? It, well, somebody abandoned him blind in the desert. I mean, how do you throw a puppy away, let alone a blind puppy? How does this guy... How I had a dog who had cataracts. Yeah. And he was going to be a seeing eye dog. Yeah. And they dropped him out. Yeah. And then we had him for 12 years, goalie. Good. And, yeah. and, they, and they also actually said that he could have been a seeing eye dog, even with the cataracts because it's mostly his smell and his senses. Right, right. But the blind, people are blind. We, we feel a little nervous, of course. They made the joke, you don't want the blind leading the blind. Right, then. <laughs> but he was, what a smart dog. Yeah. I'm I mean, glad you got him, though, because those dogs, they don't have a life. What a smart dog. Let me say something. Don't forget, Mr. Giuliani is the hero of 9-11. 9-11's coming up in a couple of weeks. He led the city through that. Imagine what leadership was, here is the leader. Here is the best leader in the country. We need leadership today, and we've got the best one right here, walking with the dogs. I'm gonna tell you about dogs. Yeah. My dog, Goalie, got me through being mayor. Oh. He took me through the snow twice. When I would come home, 
when I would come home sometimes, it would be such a bad day, he'd come up to me, he'd give me a lick, and I'd say, he's my only friend. <laughs> <laughs> I got one friend, goalie. <laughs> Ramona, over. we're going to go in with her. Okay. We can go well, see her. Uh, maybe I'll do this so that she'll, yeah. be f she'll have a nice feeling about me before we go in. We're going to go see Ramona. She's a sweetie. She's a sweetie. Yeah. This what you want? Oh, yeah. This is a very, very well-mannered dog. First she licks your hand, and then she takes it. <laughs> She's a sweetie. Look at that. Oh, she is a nice dog. She's very pleasant. Is she, 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 she old? She's older. Yeah. Yeah, they're old. Yeah, it's a very sweet dog, Ramona. No, 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 don't be afraid. Where, where was she born? No, she came in. She came in adult. She was, she was a, a rescue and adult. She, these are all desert, desert. So you can see the difference. There is a little, a little more hesitancy. The other ones run right up to you, and she's sizing you up, right? Yeah, the born here run up to you. So come up for this now, baby. Come on. If a dog ever ran up to me in the, in the, in the, the, the forest or the desert, I know they were just abandoned. After they've been out there a few weeks, they don't want to know. They yeah, just, they, 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 they give up. And they don't trust the human. Yeah, they, the bad stuff happens. Well, imagine, they're getting fed every day. They're getting fed, they have a house, whatever, whatever situation, they're getting fed every day. Now, the people take them out, and they don't tell them they're going to dump them. Right. They just take them out and drive off. Hey, guys. I should tell you, when we invented these, Manika Gandhi of India wrote a letter praising them. These are made with 25 bales of straw and three sheets of plywood, 10 minutes, and you have a shelter. And the straw will last, if you get rice straw, it'll last 20 years. We milled the, 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 the permanent ones here where we stuccoed them, and inside is a four by six doghouse, but it's four feet by six feet. Sometime I look for the workers and I couldn't find the workers, they're just taking a siesta inside the doghouse. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> But then uh, it's warm in the winter, cold, cool in the summer by about 20 degrees. It's R51 insulation. Yeah. This is all straw. Turn the bales different ways. And we put this online. We have the directions online. And uh, Manika Gandhi of India wrote a, 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 a two-page letter saying how wonderful these were. She appreciates the thing. And, uh, for people. For people. They were using them for people. My girl. Chaos is my girl. This is my girl. This is Chaos. I was telling you, she was the... The second wave from uh, Afghanistan, when, when, when all the bridges were blown, we couldn't get her out, but we got her out. Tell the quiet down. There you go, Chaos. How's my girl? How's my girl? Chaos. From Afghanistan during the war about 10 years ago, forward operating base, 30 miles ahead of the 30 miles ahead of the military base. They had all the uh, surveillance equipment and and. Uh, so we got a dog out. We got him from from Kandahar to Kabul. Then to Pakistan, then to UK, then to J Kennedy, and after we got banded out, she showed up. Oh. We had no way to get her out. It took six months to arrange to, to figure a way to get her out. But she drove from Kandahar across Afghanistan to Kabul. Look, she's gonna hit poor. She's a sweetie. Yeah, I'll give you one more. So she spent, she spent 10 years here, a year in Afghanistan during the war, and then 10 years here. What I was afraid of was the first thunderstorm. Are they going to think they're, they're, they're hearing shelling? Yeah, yeah. It didn't bother them. What? What? Hey, what am I, chopped liver? <laughs> look at, look at <laughs> You're a good girl. You're a good girl. You're a good girl. Oh, because of her, by the way, uh, they flew a flag over the base 
and uh, they put together a, a shadow box for me, thanking thanking us for getting the dogs and the cats out of Afghanistan. Aww. And the, so you're a hero. Look at the chaos. Yeah, things aren't so good back there right now, sweetheart. You're glad you're here. Dogs aren't doing too well there right now. And that's Another what they're not people. talking about. All those people, all those people who are leaving hmm. have to leave their pets behind. Oh my God. And so the Afghanis, they, they teach the kids how to be, how to be cruel. That's why the dogs, they're afraid of people. This is Maxine. Look at Maxine, how happy she is. Look at how happy she is. Maxine, her story, this British commando unit picked her up as a puppy and they carried her on missions for six months. At the end of that time, they, get, they had to go back to UK and they heard about what we were doing, shipping animals back. So they brought it to Kabul and about a month later, she made the trip. They have to go from Kabul to Pakistan, then from Pakistan to Heathrow, and from Heathrow to Kennedy, and then from Kennedy, she came here. She's a beauty. Hey, beauty. Look at the beautiful dog. Look at the Maxine. So Leo, explain to us what we've just seen. These are, these are the dogs. This is once you've, uh, when they first come in, they don't come here, right? You first. We have a hospital, right? and that's where they get an intake, okay, we'll check go. them out, do all the stuff. We have a section where they're isolated with other dogs, you know, they're, they're in each individual yard. Right. Um, and then once we know who they are and what, you know, and everything's fine with them, spayed, neutered, <clears throat> all the rest, uh, then we'll move them into yards that we know are open out here. And you try to figure out what's the best possible yard yeah. for them? Yeah, And yeah. combinations? And, and, combina and neighbors, neighbors that they like. This one has a top, Leo. Oh, yeah. That's because they're little yeah. and owls and hawks. Ooh. Owls and hawks. Got to be careful of everything. They, we have a, small, a section for small dogs, but these guys are, they just wanted to be out. In the, oh, look at them. This is Shalimar after the perfume, if you remember the perfume. Yeah. Like heat. Not too many people remember Shalimar. <laughs> you gotta sit, meet Milo. Hey, Milo. He'll grab for your hand, be careful. Ha! <laughs> oh, yeah, you're a big one, Milo. <laughs> now, Milo it, it taught, taught me a lesson. I came in here to get pictures of him, and I said, you know, I've been doing this. Come here, Milo, let me finish it off with you. I've been doing this for a long time. And Milo is proof to me that what we're doing is really, really good. Now, the backstory is down at the border our desert and the Mexican desert are the same desert. Here you go. Here you go. They're the same desert, and what they're telling me is the Mexicans are coming up to the border, and they're sending their dogs over the border to get rid of them. So the Border Patrol people, the ICE people, they feel bad for these dogs, and so if they have extra food in their lunch, they give it to them, they give them water, but then the dogs wander off, that's the end of them. And every now and then, one of the dogs hangs around a Border Patrol guy. And this uh, Milo was one of them. He hung around him. And then I got in touch because I have a friend down there, one of the uh, Border Patrol people. So he became a desert dog who was, you know, out there. And it goes up to 125 degrees. He's a desert dog, no future, yeah. no nothing. But he's, he hung around a border patrol guy long enough. Who, who ingratiated him. Who, yeah, and so we got him here. Now, here's what he did. I came here, he was in this yard for a week. This one? This yard. 
and he was so happy. He was showing us how happy he was. He was in his pool. He was running around the yard in circles, spinning, making little dust clouds. He, he just, he's, he's, and I said, this dog is just showing us exuberance. He's showing us he's come from this, and now, I said, you know how Jesse Waters says, Yes, 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 yes. I'm Jesse, and this is my world. And I said, well, that's, that's, this guy, he means it. I'm Milo, and this is my world. I can see why the Border Patrol guy liked you, Milo. You're what is known as charming. You charmed your way to all this. He's got a pool, he's got neighbors, he's got food, and he's got love. Look, so we're gonna go uh, up to the helicopter pad. We actually, uh, in the fires, we had the Forest Service use it and we supplied water oh, to, to put the fires out. Okay, we're on our helicopter pad. I built this years ago when we used to have floods. One year we had a flood so bad nobody could get to work. And I have all these dogs looking to get fed and, and, and watered and stuff. So I hired a helicopter to land about two miles away. Right. And I loaded all these guys with wide eyes onto these choppers and <laughs> flew them into here and then they could take care of, and they couldn't come out for three days. We told them, make sure you bring plenty of food. Last year, no, two, three years ago, we had a big fire here and the Forest Service finally listened and they made this their helicopter pad for the big type ones and they put a fire out on the other so side of the hill. how close is the fire get, Leo? The fire was on the other side of that mountain over there, did right you, where that charge Did you have to think about evacuating? No, you can't. This is shelter in place. If you look the way it's laid out, right. it's carved, it's fire protected. It seems so, that way, sure. There's... Yeah, and we have, if you look straight up this row here, you see those are, those little pipes sticking up, those are fire hydrants all the way down to the, yeah. the well. So we can bring in a, a fire chopper, I'm sorry, a fire, fi a fire engine and tell the Forest Service and we tell the county, you can fill up here. There's a water source and they love that. Now that pond, you can see straight ahead, there's all that green. Yeah, yeah. That's a pond, big pond. And they pump the water from the pond to this, to this hill where they had a big 15,000 gallon tank. Right. And all day they have two sky cranes going back and forth, taking water, dumping it right behind that mountain. No, you get a great idea of how big it is, Leo. You know, this, this place is in 1986. Yeah, it's nice though. Right? So we have some stuff that was built in the late 80s, then the 90s, and then I invented this thing. This was gonna be great, called Dogtown. I got uh, guys from Costa Rica to come up and design this. And I ask everybody on a tour if there's any PhDs, and they say no. I said, good, because I found out what PhD stands for. Piled higher and deeper. <laughs> so, this was flat. Those dog houses, there's 30 of them. Those are 3,000 PSI concrete. There's a boiler that runs hot water underneath in the winter and then cool water in the summer, supposedly. Right. $5,000 each one of those houses. Yeah. These are 500. The dogs love these. That's the biggest pain. <laughs> but we built it with hills to make to make uh, little neighborhoods. Look at yeah. look at my ravens. Look at my ravens. Get those ravens. Look at them. They live in these hills. Look at this. Well, they come here for the food, huh? Look at them. Look how many thousands. They come for the food. Well, you know, let's put it this way. We don't have to feed the ravens. Right. The ravens take care of themselves. Look at them. Look at all these ravens. Look to the right. Jeez. Now, they don't attack anything, do they? No. Except Tippy Hedron. No, Tippy was here visiting. Yes, and, you said. And, yeah, and she... She didn't like these ravens too much, huh? She had a bad experience years ago. She's our neighbor. She's two properties down, three properties down. Look at these babies. And how do they interact with the dogs? They have a game. Their game with the dogs is they know when the dogs are going to get their wet food. And so what they do is they line the fences and they wait. The dogs get the wet food over there and they jump down. When you eat, say over there, in, the, in their in, in their yard. But right. they get it in the front of the yard and the ravens jump down, eat the dry food while the dogs are busy eating the wet food. They steal the dry food. Oh, boy. But they do well. Look. They figured it out. 
So I was in this desert management group out there with the feds. They were protecting the desert. They're blowing it up over here and protecting it over here. So, okay. And they were concerned about the turtle, the tortoise rather. So I was at a meeting with all these generals and stuff and I'm over on the sidelines. And they're complaining about, they found 20 raven's nests with turtle shells, tort tortoise shells. So they were, they were gonna eliminate the ravens. I put up my hand. Yes, I says, you mean kill the ravens? Well, yes, yeah. why? And all these generals, and the, the, the biologists say, because they're destroying the, oh, no, 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 they're not. See, where I am, I have caps on all of my, my fencing, and the ravens steal the caps and take them to their nest to sit on them. So all they're doing is stealing shells and taking the shells to their nest. Well, we don't see it that way. I said, well, i tell you what you do. Bring me all your ravens, don't kill them. I have at least 5,000 living on our property. And everybody stopped. And she says to me, she looked at me, are you subsidizing the ravens? <laughs> Ma'am, you don't subsidize ravens. They take care of themselves. Yeah, they, they get in here with the they, they, Yeah, yeah. After that meeting, they gave me a beautiful green jacket, like like the masters, you know, yeah, they yeah, gave yeah. me yeah. green jacket, desert management group, and thanked me for my service. Isn't that nice? <laughs> and that was, yes, we, we, we're done. <laughs> now the horses are all, there's a few over there, but they run this whole hill up in here. Right now they're down, they're, they, go, they go down that part. One of our only casualties after 25 years, these straw bale dog houses, the one behind us is caving in over there. So we have to tear that down. Let's go to the cat house. I want to show you some cats. We're heading for the cat house. Well, we've got about 30 catteries, and this is the main one. It's right close to the hospital. So now we're, Leo has taken me to the cat house. Best uh, little cat house in Africa. I was a little worried when he said cat house. <laughs> And when I walked in and I saw all these beds, I was even more worried. But then I noticed he means cat house. And how did this all get started, the cat house? Oh, the name? Yeah. Oh, you, want, you really want me to tell this? Okay. Okay. okay, all right. This was a ghost town. Acton, this is, we're in Acton, California. Back in the 20, 1920s, yeah, what, 100 years ago, this was a gold mining town, gold and silver. The governor mine, uh, Governor Gage had the mine up here. He became a governor in California. And uh, eventually the mine played out uh, and became a ghost town. But while it was still running, they had a kid's uh, grade school up the street and they had a whorehouse across the street. Of course, from the, from, from from the, the school, grade school. From the grade school, yeah, because they had a lot of miners around. And the story <laughs> is that I was told by the old timers here that the, some of the kids would take their lunch money and go across the street. Get and so that, early, huh? that, was the, that was the best little cat house in Acton. So this became a ghost town. There was nothing here. When we came here, there's maybe four or five ranches in the whole community. And uh, we, I, I got this place. And so this was Richard Moore's house. This house was, uh, Richard Moore was the, the guy who did the Winnie the Pooh comic strips for 25 years. In the, in the this, thing. this house, this right exact now. house, right in that other room. So the, the, uh, the cats live in Tigger's house. That's what I tell people now. So at any rate, um, uh, they were telling me that uh, uh, when I bought this place and I converted this right away into a cat house, I needed a place for my cats. And then I wanted a sign just to capitalize on the history of the place. I wanted a sign that said, this is the best little cat house in Acton, <laughs> not the one from over there. Right, when right. The cat this is the best little cat. So I wanted a weathered sign that looked like it had been here for 100 years. And it came with painting and color, and it looked like crap. <laughs> now, look how aged it is. I know, we saw it. It yeah. looks like it's been here since the 1920s. They're actually, now they're living in Tigger's house. And I didn't figure that out until about two, three years ago. So where are they? Oh, that's This is all, Tigger's oh, house. That, that, this, this was his house. This is Richard Moore's house. I got gotcha. you. And gotcha. Winnie the Pooh was in the other room over there. Oh, on no. the art. When I first saw the house, I saw all the art boards that were going to go to the, the, the newspaper. And he did the drawing and the captions. So he did the whole thing for 25 years. And uh, the, anyway, he heard the cats were coming and he, oh, well, all right. Now, are all of the cats indoors? No, indoor, outdoor. See the little shoots, they could go out. 
They go in or out. They do whatever they want. Air conditioned in here. You can hear the air conditioner. Yes. And then outside, when, when they want during the day, um, uh, the cats go in and out. At night, they like to stay inside. But at night, the feral cats come down because the feral cats right now, cold or, or hot, the, they're all hiding up in the cat houses, the cat trees outside. The cat, you can see them walking now. Those the, are the, uh, the cats outdoors are the are feral cats. Yeah, those are mostly feral cats. And they'll come down and mix when the when the labor goes home. When the workers go home, they come down. They don't want to be around people. Oh, by the way, you see, those are actually mining shacks that they're living in. Those are miniature mining shacks with sluice boxes. I went to Calico and I looked at the Calico mine and I saw these shacks and these sluice boxes, so I had them recreate them here for the cat. So, Leo, tell us again how this all got started. This is a major uh, operation now. You have how many acres? 115 here. And wh where's the And other? there's uh, some others. This is in Acton. We have 115 on this property. And where's the other? Uh, there's some other outlying properties we have. Around Acton? Ar around Acton, yeah. And most of the animals are here. They're here. This yeah. is the main center. Yeah. Sanctuary. And this is the super sanctuary. Super sanctuary, <laughs> maximum 1,500 animals. Up to 1,500, yeah. And you said about 800 cats, 800 dogs. At max, it's about eight or 900 cats, close to 900 dogs. How many horses do you have here? Oh, not many, maybe three dozen, four dozen. They're harder to deal with them. What is? The horses. No, uh, they're delicate. Yeah, how do you find them? The, well, the, the, they'll come in different ways. They'll, they'll, I'll hear of a thing and they're abused or whatever, but the thing is a horse is the most delicate animal we have up here. Because they'll, you know, this, they'll colic and go down. They'll, they'll, they'll founder and they'll get a thing. This beautiful horse will have a, a, a thing on his foot that, that kills him. We've had that. You know, the, the, the bone rotates and stuff. Why? Why did this horse die? He was healthy. He was, he was a friendly horse. He was, why? Yeah, they're very delicate animals. Extremely. Extremely. I think maybe rabbits will beat them, but, but other than that, no. Well, you told us how you got started caring about animals and, and dealing with them. How did, how, did, how did you get to this stage where you bought a big piece of land and you put in a... Did I tell you it's a blur? <laughs> it's all a blur. <laughs> tell me what year this is. Uh, uh, man. Uh, no, I, I had to make a decision one day. What, what happened was... I had all these dogs in the woods. I was feeding them in the woods. I'm talking about, I drive up and I got 150 dogs I'm feeding in different, different woods. They see the car, they come running, they know me, they're my friends. Nobody cared. Nobody cared. No, I never got a license to, to go out and capture dogs, if there is such a thing. I never did anything by, I never asked permission. I just did it. So. When, and then I find out, you know, this animal control agency is supposed to be doing this, and they're not. I found out later. Everybody left me alone because if anybody said to me, you're not supposed to be out there rescuing these animals, I'll say, well, who is? And they say, we are. Well, why aren't you? So they didn't want that confrontation. So they just let me do what I want. And I just kept doing it. Well, I had 150 or so dogs, and I needed a place to bring them in. And I'd asked around, and I had 29 dogs at home in Glendale in the backyard. And I had a city attorney that was, you know, always after me. And he said, I don't want to, I don't want to basically put you in jail because I'm going to look bad. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so 29 dogs. So uh, uh, one day I got a phone call uh, from three different people. There's a kennel in El Monte. This was a lady who was on the Johnny Carson show. She claimed that she was an animal communicator. And she had German shepherds, and she would get cattle prod them at night to make them angry. And she sold them as guard dogs. And they finally caught up with her, put her out of business. So they had this, this, this kennel, and they said, it's available. So I went down, and I looked at it. And we had a little tiny bit of money to put down on it and get a mortgage. I uh, talked to a bunch of people, ran stories in the paper, and I got on TV a lot. And I needed an angel to sign for the mortgage. And there was a guy, his name was Teague, T-E-A-G-U-E, Teague. He looked like Alfred Hitchcock, <laughs> an English guy. And he's, he made titanium rods to hold people who were paraplegic. He would hold their heads up with titanium rods in the halo. So his wife said to him, Derek Teague, she said, Derek, you make the halo already. Why don't you be the angel? 
So <laughs> he signed for us, and we got that first, that first kennel down there. And I brought 150 dogs in in like a month. And I, I had them all, here they are. But that was a regular kennel. That was a regular kennel, When yeah. did you go to the concept of having this uh, vast property? Well, well, what happened was this was 83, we got the kennel. So about 84, 85, I have a kennel. And, you know, I had up to 250 dogs eventually down there. I said, I need to build something from scratch. So back then we had direct mail before the internet. And I was good at direct mail, so I raised a lot of money. And I got people to buy uh, shares, deed shares, I call them. $89, you could have a deed share. And we figured out how much land there was. And I broke it down into how much $89 would buy. And people could buy multiples of, of $89 for, uh, donate money, donate $89 to own, get a deed share with their name on it. So we did that and, and bought this property. Now I have this land. What am I going to do with it? We had a build. The property meaning the whole 320? Oh, well, I had 21. I had 21 acres. 21 acres. 21 Over acres here. of Richard Moore's property. Right, right. First thing is I put up fences, <laughs> and then I put up fences here. And it just organically evolved. I never planned on, I, I didn't know how many dogs I was going to get. I didn't know how many cats when I was going to get. did you get the idea that we saw with the uh, dog house, a yard for each dog or for yeah. every two dogs? When did you get that concept? Which seems like a pretty novel concept. Well, it started, it started off where back in El Monte, we had dog runs. And then I had a big exercise yard, big. It's only, the whole place was a half an acre. It was tiny. But I would let the dogs out in the exercise yard. And all day long, they get rotated. And they go out for five, 10 minutes. And they run around. Then they come back. They want, they're knocking on the door. Literally, we had a wooden door. Mm -hmm. Knock, knock. They go back into their dog run. And they jump on the dog house. And they tell all their neighbors. They're spinning. I had a pee. I had a pee. I, you know, I went out and I had a great pee. That's what they would do. Hmm. So we came up here and the first thing I did was I built a section out there called the, we call it the I section. I built these 15 by 20 dog yards, small. And then all day long they would rotate into these giant, like half acre yards. There's three yards. And then I saw the dogs did the same thing. 10 minutes, come back in. And I got laborers all day long rotating dogs. And then I thought, you know what? This isn't, this isn't the way to do it. Let me see if I can build bigger yards and keep them in. So that's what we did. We built bigger yards and kept the dogs in them. And again, I didn't know how many dogs we were going to have. We just, just kept doing it. And uh, eventually had uh, wooden dog houses. We had shacks, the sheds that they build and sell by the roadside. You can buy a tool shed for your tools. Mm -hmm. We had to make them for my dogs. Then we had that dog town I showed you over there where we uh, have concrete and all this other mumbo jumbo, $5,000 a piece. And then one day I saw Olivia Newton-John on TV with a guy down in Australia and they were building something out of straw and she had a glove on, and she was putting the stucco on, on the outside. So we came up with an idea to use straw, but we couldn't get the stucco to stick. So we got in touch with the people in Australia, and we got the formula to make the stucco stick. And that became the straw bale dog houses. So now that we could do that, we could build more yards, more straw bale. And again, I don't know how many dogs I'm going to have, but I know I have land. And we had a full-time fence crew, a full-time you know, construction crew for the, for the, 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 the stuff. And it, it grew. And, and that, that was it. It just, uh, it is what it is. We have fires. <clears throat> and the fires around here, I'm worried about the direction they're coming in. So I've, I've pulled the sanctuary back into the center. I've, I've stopped using the perimeter yards mm -hmm. that are close to where the fires would be. Mm -hmm. Because we've had to move them during a fire, bring everybody in, you know, and all that. Uh, but now we're in a situation where, um, with what's going on, I showed you, like, with uh, uh, Milo, you know, uh, there's a lot going on in our desert is now the Mexican desert and our desert. So they're, they're all mixed up. So we're helping those dogs get them out of there. There are hours there. Who, who knows? They're a dog. But where are they now physically? The ones that need help, yeah. they're in the desert, south of here. So that, that's the group you still have to rescue. Uh, oh yeah, that'll be they'll be coming in. 
a little at a time, so we'll be building back up to capacity. Because there's another, you know what I found too? When I rescue dogs or cats, and I keep rescuing, people don't dump anymore because they don't see the sign that says dump your dog here, or, dump your, your cat here. So I said, you know, if I could live a thousand years, we wouldn't have abandoned animals because I clean up all the abandonment areas and nobody will ever think to dump a dog. Right. But, you know, I did a thing in 83 for National Public Radio, and I stand by this today, that I made a deal with the universe some time ago that any animal that needs my help cross my path. That's what I said, cross my path. Imagine I did this in 83, I must have been smart. <laughs> cross my path. A cat, a dog, a cow, we have cows over there. Uh, cross my path. So I help that animal and I go out of my way to do whatever. That, this, these animals cross my path. They all cross my path. Do you ad <laughs> allow dogs to be adopted from you? I did in the old days. I wrote a book on adopting because nobody else did. I did a movie with celebrities about adopting. And about 10 years in, I found out it ain't working too well. Why not? I get the best people. I'm the guy who knows how to adopt. Yeah, Why yeah, isn't yeah, yeah. it working? We did a thing, a market research on the pet industry. <clears throat> and then I got a call from the researchers. Oh my God, you won't believe what we just found. What? In America, people keep their pets two and a half years. That's it, average. This was back 25 years ago. Two and a half years, yeah. Now it's probably much less. So then it hit me that that's it. I don't care if I adopt them or if you adopt them or if this, this whoever does it, people generally keep them two and a half years, meaning you keep them for life, I keep them for life, they keep them for six months. Mm. Somewhere there's an average of two and a half years. Why am I, my, after all that they've been through, I'm not gonna trust somebody to give them a full, lifespan. I'm not going to do it. The odds are it ain't going to happen. So I had one dog in particular, I told you Bonnie. I had Bonnie that I had her for years and these wonderful donors fell in love with her and I adopted them and, and all and I checked up, everything's fine. She's on the couch at Christmas with their dogs, everything's happy. And then I called the following summer, oh we put her down. What do you mean? Well the, the vet said she was developing kidney problems. We have a dialysis program we started with UC Davis. I know a lot about kidneys. So some shopping mall vet told you that my dog that you adopted is developing kidney problems? And you put, well, we got in a big fight. And I slammed the phone down. I said, I will never adopt another dog to anybody as long as I live, and right. I have it. I will not adopt to anybody. That's it. Here, guaranteed for life. My promise to them, this will never happen again. These cats, these dogs. This will never happen again. You will never be abandoned. How do you, how do you uh, afford this place? How, how do you maintain it? Back in the day. This is very expensive. Yes, yes, yeah. Uh, back in the day, we had direct mail. Direct mail, uh, I would write letters to millions of people, and we would get money. When we did the UC Davis dialysis program that we, we, we founded with them, we had money coming in from direct mail. So what I do is I bought more property so that we could have more animals. I did that. Um, and then one year I found out about the, the dogs didn't have any dialysis. There's no way to save them because I had a dog in trouble. I called UC Davis and they said, well, dialysis, oh, where can I bring them? Well, there is no such thing on the planet. Why not? Because there's no money in it for veterinarians. Nobody wants to, to do it. So I said, talk to me. So we ended up, we built a dialysis center at UC Davis, and they dialyzed hundreds of dogs, you know, and then they learned things. You couldn't dialyze a cat, now you can. You could, the, di the dog dialysis, they can now get this. If your dog drinks antifreeze, he's gonna die. If he drinks antifreeze and you fly him to UC Davis, or now they have 11 different ones, San Diego and stuff. If you fly him out here, and if they dialyze him the first day, he will not only live, he won't have any kidney damage whatsoever. It's like he never drank antifreeze. So they learned all of this, you know, with, with the program. That, that's when we had money. As direct mail died and the internet took over and my mailing list is shrink, 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 now we depend on bequests from people who used to be donors, <coughs> who passed away right. and they left something in their estate planning. Mm -hmm. 
So then I said, you know what, for the long term, who knows what's going to happen fundraising wise, uh, for the long term, I think the bequest, the estate planning is what keeps this place going. So if we get more people interested in putting this organization in their estate plans, then long term, this place will go on forever, right. but we need to do that. We need to put estate plans. That's more important than current fundraising? Yeah, because yeah, current, sure. you're asking people to donate $25 they don't have. Right. But when, when they put it in their estate plans, they're not going to need it, so let me give it to the animals. Mm -hmm. And that's the idea. So when you talk about estates, you know, if people are going to entrust their money to an organization, number one, make sure it's doing what you want them to do, but make sure they're going to be here. Think about that. So many organizations that did well after 10 years, they're gone, 15, they're gone. And I know because we're in an estate with somebody and they name five other places that don't exist anymore. And you go, well, how do you do this? So if you're going to leave your money, you have to leave it to an organization that's going to be there. On the other hand, you get these giant organizations that are super rich, hundreds of millions of dollars. Your money's like nothing. So, you know, in, in the middle, you have a sweet spot. And I like to say that we are in this sweet spot where we've been around for 42 years. So we're going to be here and we're not rich. Your money coming in here will mean something. So that's 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 the whole the whole point. It's really terrific. I mean, yeah. It's an unbelievable facility that you built. Yeah, it's amazing. When, when I look at it sometime, I, I, I what the, who did this? <laughs> and when you started your life, did you ever think you'd be doing this? I, I had no idea. You know, I came out here as an actor. Like I said, I was an actor, and uh, I found these dogs, and I fed them, and then it was bad weather, and they were sick, and I kept feeding them, and then the agent called me and said, you keep missing auditions. You can't be an actor and do this. You have to choose. And I just said, look, I'm feeding dogs right now. I'll call you back. So she dumped me. And that was the end of that. And then I've been doing this ever since. I said, like, like all actors, I had an ego the size of Texas. I think, oh, I'm going to make it big. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. Well, what if you did? Unless, unless you're one of the t you know, 20 million a year people, mm -hmm. you make a living. That's it. I, re I really, if I knew back then what I know now, I'd do this. Do you get anything out of this? Yeah, look. You know, look. And I, I play this game with myself a lot. When I'm trying to save an animal, you know, one of mine, I'm thinking, what would I, what would I give up to save this animal? You know, this, this one of my, my personal ones, what, what would I give up? Would I give up this and would I give up this and would I give up that and would I give up that? And it always comes back to yes, but you can't. Mm -hmm. So how do we keep how do, how do we keep this going? This is really valuable. Does it need to expand, Leo? I tried expanding, mm -hmm. and unless you could watch it every day and see for yourself what's going on, you, you, we'll this is it. Quality, quality. This of is it. I'm thinking there are other things to do, and I have done some other things. We've done something in Romania. We did something in uh, India. We did a big thing in India for cheap money. You won't believe it. They they had we did stuff with dogs in India. They electrocute them there too. Um, but we did a thing with tigers. They had four big um, uh, wilderness areas. Only one had tigers in it because that's where the prey was, and the other three didn't have it because they didn't have any water. Huh. So somebody said, oh, World Wildlife Fund was there for 30 mm -hmm. years. They didn't have any water. So somebody said, you know, if we built drainage and built these, da these <laughs> things, we would get water to the other three. And so at the time, you know, we had money, we were in direct mail, and I said, okay, what will that cost? Well, they gave me an idea. So we built it in a month. We had heavy <coughs> equipment, we had these giant, uh, we moved earth, mm -hmm. and we created these things. The monsoon came, and it flooded the other three beautifully, it filled the lakes, the prey went down to the other three out of four parks. The tigers followed them and nobody poached the tigers because they weren't that many. Everything worked out and how, did, how much did that cost? About $7,000. Mm -hmm. $7,000 right. for the whole thing. Right. They worked for 35 cents a day. It's a lot easier to do. Yeah, yeah $7,000. We saved all the time. And we go, this world is really nuts. This is remarkable, Leo, that you did this. I mean, so what, 
what further work has to be done that's really important to you to, to really uh, m make sure that this continues, it grows? Is, it, is, is there more of a need now f for this? Is the need growing? Is it getting smaller? Yeah, no, there, there are more. Well, cats, there will always be. There's feral cats all over the world. Dogs, they're in trouble all over the world. All I could do is, is like I said, cross my path. You know, it, the, the ones that, that cross my path, I have to do this. Only a lot of them cross my path, you know. Yeah, sure. So I, I, I wish more people would, would, you know, understand that when they see a dog out there, don't just walk away. Don't yeah. just feed them. Give them some water. Give them some food. Mm -hmm. You know, go back and keep doing it. You know, that was, that was always the thing. Um, I think here... What, what, we need, what we need to keep going into the future is not to ask people f for, um, uh, like they do on those late night commercials, mm -hmm. those poor women that call up and say, oh, I don't want to live anymore. I see those commercials every night and those animals are suffering and they're suffering all of it. No, 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 no. First of all, those are stock shots. Those are stock shots they set up. <laughs> they got a video camera. Why is the dog shaking? Because he's afraid of the video camera. <laughs> And the lights, and, the, and you're falling for that crap. Now look, at, that's not it, all right? That's not what's going on. So don't, don't give up the ship, because that, you know, <laughs> you know. The thing is, to keep this going, this is gonna save thousands. Every animal you've seen today, every animal you've seen would be dead. You'd never know they were alive and died. You'll never know these cats lived and died. You would never know, because they'd be dead if it weren't for here. This is a sanctuary. It's a sanctuary, they'll stay and they'll get everything and we do everything. Why am I doing this if I can't take care of them all the way to the end? There's no point. I'm not in animal control. I'm not trying to clear the streets of these, you know, these cats or these dogs. Uh, but if you look at it all and, and the, the problem is so bad out there, you, you help what you can help. You can't, you can't help them all, but you can try to tell people, look, I'm gonna tell you a secret. Look what this crazy SOB did. One crazy man did this. You can take care of five or six. This has been a very, very interesting and uh, fascinating visit to Delta Rescue. It is much bigger. It is much more interesting. It's much more intricate than I realized, and I had pretty big uh, projection for it as what it would be like. It's also remarkable to see the solutions that have been found for these animals so that they can live out well, obviously, you can just see it. I mean, we, we saw it with the dogs. We see it now with the cats. These are very, very contented, happy animals who at one time in their life were either tortured or abandoned or left alone or thrown out or uh, a terrible life would have been ahead for them. So it's just wonderful to see that they're being so well taken care of. And it just brings much more love into this whole world. We can do this. And boy, do we need love. And do we need animals to keep us kind of balanced and in perspective. Thank you, Leo. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank everyone here. Our hero of 9-11. No, but we're going to be back. We're going to be like it here.